ハッピーウィンターホリデーエブリワン !My name is Hiroki. I'm producer of War of the Vision FFB Global Version. Hello, everybody. My name is Justin. I am the community manager for War of the Visions FFBE Global Version.、Uh, real quick before we get started, War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave Exvius is a new tactical RPG born from the Final Fantasy Brave Exvius universe. It's now available on the Apple App Store, Google Play, and the Amazon App Store. Due to the COVID 19 situation, we are not shooting this video from studio. We are recording this video remotely. Uh, yeah, that's right. And we're thrilled to be able to share more information with everybody this month as well.、Uh, so stay tuned till the end to hear the exciting details about the new units, year end campaigns, and more. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> My blade is one of darkness. If you have no qualms, I will gladly fight by your side. Time to make amends. Though I have sinned with Dark Blade in hand, I still seek the light! To start, we have got some news regarding new unit that is sure to please global version players. Dark Swordsman, Dwayne! Will be released a limited global original unit. Yeah. Wow. <laughs>、uh, yeah, so that's very exciting.、Uh, there may be some War of the Visions players who are unfamiliar with this character. Dwayne is a famous character in FFBE, is that right, Hiroki? Yeah, that's right. So, the Dwayne has been、uh, FFBE since the early days of,、uh, of the game and a long time favorite of players. Freya even voted him as the number one、uh, desired character for reskin, or rather an update. In the survey carried out at the、um, FFB Fan Festa. So, he hasn't received、uh, reskin in FFB. We want to acknowledge everyone's passionate backing of Duane. And so, We have decided to release him in War of the Visions. <laughs>、uh, yeah, so I think the details should be showing up on screen right about now. But Dwayne is a character with a tragic story. After learning the forbidden sword art of Dark Blade, he was taken hold of by the power of darkness and ultimately went on to take his own life. That darkness about him is both scary and cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, He's only three star y u n i t in FFBE. But in the early days of the game,、uh, I think my player used him in a, a party as a solid dark element attacker. From his look to his rhyme, he really is a dark swordsman through and through, which is what makes him such a cool character. So、uh, we hope that a prior fans. From FFB and the player who just learned about Duane for the first time will all take a long liking to him in f l of the Visions. Well, then, yep, that's definitely right. So let's get down to introducing Duane's characteristics. Just like Stern, Knight of Ruin, Duane is a cost 100 unit with the incredible strength to match it. He is a dark element unit, and his main job, Dark Knight of Remorse, reflects his character's history. His sub jobs are Viking and Dragoon. As for Dark Knight of Remorse's abilities, I'll start by introducing Magic and Fuse. It's an ability that appeared in the original FFBE as well, where it simply inflicted dark type damage. However, it has been revamped for War of the Visions and now removes re rays from the target before inflicting a large amount of damage and reducing AP as well. It's a powerful ability. Capable of crushing enemies that make use of re rays without allowing them to revive after being KO'd. Next up is a familiar ability that appears not only in FFBE, but in the Final Fantasy series as well Darkness. This offensive ability deals a medium amount of damage to targets within range and has a chance of inflicting disabled. 
What's more is that unlike in FFBE, it no longer consumes the user's HP in the process, making it very easy to deploy. In addition, by using Rising Twilight beforehand, which lowers the target's dark resistance for three turns and then deals a small amount of damage, subsequent dark attacks will do even more damage to targets, so we recommend actively making use of this when you have extra AP to burn. And next is an extremely powerful ability of Dwayne's, Atonement. Effect-wise, it significantly raises the slash attack of allies within the area around Dwayne for three turns and raises his own defense oh, yeah. rate as well. By including other units in your formation that utilize slash attacks with swords, axes, and other weapons, it becomes possible to buff all party members at once. His limit burst, Death Scythe, deals two hit large damage to targets within range and absorbs a portion of the damage dealt. It's a limit burst befitting of the Dark Blade Practitioner Dwayne. If you set his sub ability to Dark Knight of Remorse, you will be able to make use of debuff abilities that reduce enemies' offensive capabilities such as Sword Eater, which deals a medium amount of damage to targets and reduces the attack for three turns, or Spell Eater, which deals a medium amount of damage to the target and reduces magic for three turns. When facing formidable enemies, a powerful combination of Dwayne's would be to first bestow buffs with Atonement, then use Rising Twilight to lower the enemy's dark resistance before deploying either Magic Infuse or Darkness to inflict a large amount of damage. And while he features high attack power in line with his introduction as an offensive unit, he also possesses high HP, and his support abilities include means of raising hate and defense, all of which make him a frontline attacker capable of drawing and enduring enemy attacks. Dwayne is a limited unit with a cost of 100 which for some may carry along with it an impression of unit shards being particularly difficult to gather. But even aside from summons and shops, we are working to make his unit shards available through a wide variety of other in-game means as well, such as login bonuses and challenge missions. So we hope that everyone will seize this opportunity to acquire and enhance Dwayne. The roaming dual gunner Luartha will also be making her debut. She is a fire element unit whose main job is dual gunner, for her sub-jobs, she has Gunner and Soldier. With her main job, Dual Gunner, it is possible to use Quadruple Shot, which can effectively create chains by dealing multi-hit damage, as well as Split Shot, which deals a medium amount of damage to targets within range. Moreover, her support abilities include the Missile Attack Raising Missile Mastery, and the Agility and Defense Piercing Rising Tune Up, both of which allow her to steadily deal high amounts of damage to opponents with high defense. If you set her subjob to Gunner, she can be used as an attacking supporter with abilities like Immobilize Inflicting Leg Shot and the Disable Inflicting Arm Shot. Setting it to Soldier will turn her into a cannon-like unit capable of attacking with high firepower across long distances thanks to Hazard Form, which consumes her own HP to raise her attack for three turns. Her limit burst, Speed Break Shot, deals two hits large damage to targets within range in addition to lowering agility for three turns. Regarding Luartha's limit burst animation, there will be no animation at the time of her release as it is planned to be added in January. We truly regret to have to make players who were looking forward to her limit burst animation wait a little longer. The limit burst itself will be usable from the get-go and please be rest assured that the temporary lack of an animation has no effect on her functionality. A new vision card depicting Dwayne, Irresistible Darkness, will also be making its debut. In addition to its bestowed effect, Slash Attack Up, it has a limited bestowed effect, Dark Attack Up, when equipped to Dwayne. Its party abilities include Attack Up and Magic Attack Resistance Up. All of its offensive effects work well on Dwayne, and the vision card is incredibly well suited to other Slash Attack oriented units. Dwayne's uh, vision card depicts him without his helmet on. His expression was designed to feature mixture of darkness and uh, sadness. So please be sure to check it out. His unit and vision card were both designed with, with functionality in mind as well. So please look forward to using them in battle. The unit and the vision card that have already debuted this month are quite special as well. So please allow us to introduce those two. 
Uh, yep, that's right. So, first up, we have the adorably bundled up Ramada, Winter, who has changed from wielding spears to wielding greatswords. Her element is water, her main job is soldier, and her subjobs are ninja and monk, making her a more offensively capable unit than the normal Ramada. Her limit burst, Holy Knight's Judgment, lowers the slash resistance of targets within range for three turns, then deals a large amount of damage. And next up, we have Mashiri Winter. Mashiri was primarily a magic attacker before, but in this version, she has been reborn as a physical attacker. Her element changed to fire, her main job to dragoon, and her sub jobs to viking and ranger, making her an offensive unit with high mobility, thus giving her an entirely different role than the normal Mashiri. Her Limit Burst, Holy Knight's Gift, deals 2 hit large damage to targets within range and raises Mashiri's own defense for 3 turns. Coinciding with their debuts in the global version, both Ramada Winter and Mashiri Winter have been given master abilities, making them more powerful than when they debuted in the Japanese version. The limited vision card Winter Holiday Party has also been released and is currently available. The main units for this vision card are Elzarel, who finished 2nd on the global character popularity pool, and Ildira, who finished 19th but is nonetheless a highly popular unit. In addition to the party ability Area Attack Resistance Up, when equipped to units with Mace Equipable Main Jobs, the limited bestowed effect Magic Up and the ability Height 3 Holy Knights Purge will be granted. Moreover, as an update for the global version that perfectly tailors these vision cards for Ildira, the bestowed effect Water Attack Up has been added and triggers only when equipped to Ildira herself. This vision card has been released for Global First. Since the storyline of one of the visions of FFBE often turned quite serious. For this vision card, we tried getting a relaxed short snapshot of Elzeel and Urdira, simply enjoying the winter holiday. It's a very cute scene with Urdira carrying a home cooked dish and Elzeel happily snacking at the table. So be sure to get this vision card. To wrap up, the winter festivities campaigns will continue after Duane's release on December 23rd. So please enjoy of all the new content. Uh, in this segment, we will answer questions from the War of the Visions community. So I'm ready when you are, Hiroki. Ready. All right, great, let's do this. Okay, so let's move on to the first question here. Are there any plans to earn additional vision card shards? We have received this question from many players. Uh, unit shards are currently available through various methods, aside from common and shops. And uh, we, are, we are considering increasing this amount of acquisition method for vision card shard as well. Okay, thank you very much. I think a lot of players will be happy to hear that. Uh, now let's move on to the next question. Would it be possible to make earning Esper Residence a little easier? Uh, yes, uh, recently. We released an update in which Esper resonance increased even when using story skip ticket. And we are also considering implementing quests which are should which are suited to increasing Esper resonance in the future. Okay, that is very good to hear. Thank you for answering that question. Uh, now let's move on to the next question here. With the Final Fantasy IV collaboration, coming out before the return of Final Fantasy XIV collaboration, some players are concerned that it might not return. Can we expect yeah. it to come in the future? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, we are thinking we'd like to uh, carry out the Final Fantasy XIV collaboration again soon. Regarding the timing, we'll be making a further announcement, so we ask for your patience until then. Uh, yep, that's true, so be patient, please. Um, and thank you so much, Roki, for answering these questions. I know the community is going to love these. Um, and yes, War of Divisions is taking your questions and your requests on our community sites, so continue sending the feedback. We will continue going through it. Um, and of course, we look at all the feedback, even feedback or questions that don't show up here. Uh, time is almost up, but do you have anything you'd like to leave the players before we finish, Roki? Yeah, uh, I'm glad you asked. 
as is custom, we are giving everyone special item to uh, celebrate this video. The detail will be shown on your screen. What more? We will also be gifting prayers with one MR plus guaranteed 10 times summon each day from December 23rd to December 31st. And since the new year is almost here, I'd like to announce the year end campaigns. To start, in addition to continuous of the winter festivities campaign, which is currently underway, we will have some valuable item packs and vision pack, visual packs on the sale as well. Then, we are also planning a special present to mark the new year. Look forward to it. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Roki. Um, and thanks for the scoop on the presents and the campaigns. Now, I think it is really time to wrap up this video. Thank you again for sticking around until the end. Thanks everyone. Uh, for, so, for those up north, be sure to take care as the weather gets colder. And for those down south, make sure to get your sunscreen ready. <laughs> uh, yes, maybe even try holing up in a comfortable room and playing War of the Visions to escape the cold or the heat. And without further ado, Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.